Ah, GoPro footage. It's kind of the standard when it comes to FPV footage. And when you strap a GoPro Hero, with whatever model that you have, whether it's an 11 mini or a 10, 9, 8, you know, just throw your name on there, use any type of stabilization with it, it usually comes out looking pretty good if you fly halfway decent and you know how to do a little bit of a color grading. But what if what if you're not going out on a 5 inch or a 7 inch and you don't want to strap an extra camera to your quad and you're doing something kind of like what I really like to do and just go to the park with my 4 inch walk snail system little toothpicky kind of flyer and uh, just have a good time and quite honestly the onboard 1080p60 recording for this is pretty good and it makes me wonder maybe could I improve it and you might be wondering the same thing which is why you're here and quite frankly yeah you can improve this footage greatly and make it a whole lot more enjoyable for your friends your family I don't know anybody that may want to watch it including yourself so let's uh let's jump into it you know obviously you want to use the onboard DVR you can use the you know goggle DVR if you want to but for this we definitely want to use the onboard and you're going to use two programs to do this we're going to use Jabra Flow and we're going to use uh, DaVinci Resolve now both of these are free to use you can get Jabra Flow for no no expense and you can use the beta version of DaVinci Resolve and have access to most everything you're going to need to do Actually, you're going to have access to everything you're going to need in order to do what we're going to do. So we've got Jaro Flow version 1.5 opened up. And if you're wondering why I may be using Jaro Flow, and we know that the WalkSnow 1S Nano system, which is what I'm using on this quad, doesn't have a gyro in the camera. So it's not the Pro model. It's not the new V2. So what am I going to do with Jaro Flow? Well, pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and open the file. We're going to do most of this in real time because it's not a very difficult thing to do. I'm going to open it. Let's see. Where did I put it? I put it on the front. Ah, avatar fix. Maybe I should remember what I named folders. I'm going to open that up, and this is the file from my avatar system. So I'm going to open it up and let it load. Now, it says here lens profile is not loaded. The results will not look correct. Okay, and that's, that's really all we're doing here. It's all we're doing in Gyroflow. If you look here... Uh, look at how fish-eyed it is. Now, 170 degree view, field of view on 16 by 9 lens ends up with pretty wide fish eye. In fact, if we go forward, you can see here motors all in the frame. Even my canopy is still in there. And look how bowed out everything is. Now, for most FPV pilots, we see this and it's normal. But if you're not an FPV pilot and you're seeing this, then you're probably not going to like that. So what I want to do is we're going to load up the lens profile. You can type in walk snail if you can spell. So you see a few here. You got the micro 720p, 1080p. This is the one we're going to use here. Use the one according to the one that you need. Uh, this right here, walk snail avatar 1s kit nano 1080p. So 1080p, it's, mm, these are newer, so that's nice to see. But we're going to use this one, 1080 60. Now watch what happens. This is kind of the big kicker here. It's the lens correction. This right here, stabilization, it's whatever. That's You're not going to do a whole lot of there. But what you don't want to do is just leave it here. Because now we went from like super wide to pretty narrow. And props are still in the view, but now they look a little bit distorted in almost the wrong direction. So what I want to do here is I'm going to take this. This is a good spot in the video to adjust this. You're going to go on the right-hand side. you got synchronization at the top. We're not worried about that. We're going to go ahead and collapse it, collapse stabilization. Oop, I guess we don't collapse stabilization because what we want is right here, lens correction strength. Now, you can leave it at 100%, or you can drag this all the way down to zero. Now we're back at to where we were. So that's zero, and that's 100 and that's a little too much for me. What I have found is on the WalkSnail Nano Kit, a 30% correction yields a very nice appeal. And then I actually take the FOV because if you look, if we take this, this is the view that we've got. We've still got some pixels at the top and the bottom, and we're not using any stabilization here. So what we can do is 
we can use our FOV to slide this out. We're going to get warnings. There we go. So we want to get as much in the frame as possible. And it's going to give us warning FOV is greater than zero. You may see black borders, but we're not using any stabilization. So this image isn't going to move. You can see along the roof line here, it's a little bit curved, but that's going to yield, in my opinion, a very nice look. If we look here, you can look at it in motion. It looks very action camera like. So I like that, but you could stop here and you could export this and you could call it a day. But what we want to do now is move over into DaVinci Resolve and we want to give this color some pop. So hold tight. Okay, now we're done with Gyroflow. We've exported the footage and now we have it in a folder that we're going to work with in DaVinci Resolve. So you want to go to your media tab over here where you're going to get your files together. And this is the one I'm going to use. This is the stabilized version. This is the non-stabilized. This is the stabilized, even though it's not really stabilized, just lens corrected. I want to take it and I'm going to drop it down. I'm going to allow it to change my frame rate because I want this to export at 60 FPS for whenever I make my final video showing you how I did this. Uh, so for what you want to do now is I'm not going to add any overlays. We're going to use just that footage there. We're going to go to our edit tab and we're going to take that one folder and we're going to or file rather and we're going to drop it down into our workspace here. Now this isn't where we're really going to do anything with it. We're going to move over to our color tab. It's going to be the ones with the little dots there. Hit your color button. Let it pull it up. Thankfully, Walksnail does a pretty good job already of having your colors pretty well balanced. You can see the, the, the scope over here. It's not that far out. Blue could use a little bit of work, but it looks pretty decent on the screen up there. So I'm going to... I don't think I've got a whole lot of adjustment points I can work with here. What I want to do here with my little bitty laptop that I'm working on is I want to go to my color wheel. Alright, so here is my primary color, color wheel. I have found what I like to do on here is I use these numbers here on the bottom. You got your color boost, shadows. I don't mess with any of these here. I don't mess with the lift. I don't mess with the gamma, the gain. White balance is pretty good. So what I like to do, and this is, you're going to laugh because this is super simple. I just come down here to color boost. And I give it, I go to 50. And look how br much brighter a lot of those colors just got. Now contrast, I go to 1.05, which gives me a 5% boost in contrast. And that's it. You can adjust your saturation a little bit. You can adjust the blue if you want to. If maybe you want to lift up the base on the blues but it's going to make it pretty blue. You can see the change up there. That's the, you know, that's a topic for a whole different day. So maybe we'll have that discussion later. Now that we're done with this part, I want to show you how I export it to make it look even better. We're going to go back to our edit tab and I'm going to give you a shortcut. I hit shift and nine and that brings up your project settings. Now you can get here other ways than this, but this is the way that I go. I change my timeline resolution. I want to put that at Ultra HD 4K. So and then I'm going to hit save. And now I can go over here and I can export H.265. I change it to MP4. Let it be H.265 right here on their codec. And then let's go ahead and change this. Desktop, avatar fix, avatar export. And then I'm going to add it to the render queue. And I'm going to hit render all. And while it's rendering, we're going to just transition into what this final thing looked like. So if this helped you out with any improvements of your footage, let me know down in the comment section below. Make sure you like and subscribe. And we're going to catch you guys in the next one. And honestly, I got a lot of ideas for that one and I don't know which way I'm going. So stick around and be surprised. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room and Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait A first time, a first date You're so fine, 
I'm so late, you sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time, to my place I feel my heart erase So catch me if I fall Catch me if I fall 